All right, looks like we have hit seven o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm sure we'll have some stragglers coming in, but um, they can definitely catch up. So um, first, just to introduce myself and uh, my colleague, my name is Rachel Mangivellano, and um, I'm of the Center, which is the College of Engineering Career Office, as I'm sure most of you know. Um, I work specifically with first year students, and I'll let my colleague Garth introduce himself. So hi, I'm Garth Machenbacher. I also work in the center. Uh, I specialize with the uh, graduating seniors and young alumni, as well as employ all employer engagement. Awesome. So our topic tonight is how to make the most of your summer. You're probably here because you're still looking for an internship or a co-op or something that you can do this summer um, to build up your resume. So we're going to talk about some options that you have, and then very specifically at the end, we're going to dive into um, something that Garth and I will be running through the College of Engineering this summer. There we go. Um, so the first thing I'll say is that opportunities are still out there. Um, we were talking to our other colleague, Kyle, who's our co-op and internship coordinator, um, just this morning, and he was saying that he's having a ton of reports of people who have um, had a lot of activity and have accepted things just in the last week or two. So do not give up hope, first and foremost. There are definitely still some things out there. Employers are still looking and posting. There's new stuff going up on Handshake all the time. Um, so that being said, continue to pound those ha Handshake job postings. Um, you can also do an empl a proactive employer reach out. If you've met with any of us, we've probably walked you through it. But basically, instead of going to the job posting section of Handshake, you go to the employer postings, or I'm sorry, the employer section of Handshake, and you can filter down by location, industry, uh, employer size. And a lot of times those small to medium sized companies are not as active um, in posting on Handshake or um, even coming to the career fairs that happened earlier this year. So by proactively um, going to their individual website or reaching out if they still don't have any postings, we've had a lot of students have success with that. So keep that in mind. Um, also, keep in mind that applying to things, especially at this time of the year, probably isn't enough. You're going to need to make those personal contacts on LinkedIn. So if you don't have a LinkedIn, don't know how to utilize it, definitely set up an appointment with one of us um, as soon as possible, and we can continue to work with you through that. But making those connections to those employers of interest is definitely going to be more beneficial than just randomly applying and being one of many. Um, the other thing is we always have the resume books for our office. So on Handshake Under Jobs, if you search resume books, you'll see that we have both a summer resume book as well as a fall co-op resume book. Anytime we have an employer reach out to us, we not only tell them to post a Handshake, but we also provide them copies of those resume books broken down by major. So if they reach out and say, I'm still looking for an electrical engineer, what do you have? Um, we go ahead and send that resume book in addition to telling them to apply. So if you're pounding those uh, job posting on Handshake and you have your best, most updated resume as part of those resume books, then you'll know that you're doing um, kind of a two-pronged approach there. Um, and then lastly, I mentioned meeting with one of us. If you need help on um, you know, doing that proactive employer reach out, connecting with people on LinkedIn, anything like that, that link right there, and Garth can probably um, drop it in the chat for you so that you can actually have a clickable link. Um, but that page will give you a link depending on what your situation is. Um, myself, if you're a first year student, senior, um, you'll wanna meet with Garth, and then anything in between, you'll meet with our colleague Kyle that I mentioned. Um, so Garth, anything you wanna add before we move on? Yeah, one of the things that uh, Rachel wanted to point out to everybody is the idea again that you make sure that not only you go out and connect with employers, but you double back with employers. I met with two students today that had talked with employers over a month ago and they hadn't heard back. And they said, is it appropriate to follow up with the employer? Yes, it's absolutely appropriate to follow up with the employer. You're the one looking for the job. There are literally tens of hundreds, if not thousands of people applying for jobs right now, and who knows how busy they are. And so the squeaky wheel definitely does receive the oil here in terms of grease, in terms of 
the one that gets the attention. It is totally appropriate for you to follow back with follow up with all employers that you made contact with throughout the school year, whether it be at a career fair, whether it be at an informal networking session, whether it be at uh, a student group organization, or just someone that you met or were connected with through a, a contact. It is absolutely appropriate for you to follow up with them, make sure that they've got your resume, see where they are in the job search process and let them know you're still available and interested. Sometimes that can make the difference and gets who gets hired and who doesn't. All right, so moving on to the next slides. Um, you know, obviously keep pounding the pavement. What if that doesn't work? So a lot of the things we wanna talk about tonight is how can you build your resume even if there's not a formalized internship on it? Um, so here are some suggestions for you. The first are micro internships. If you haven't heard of what these are, they are shorter term, typically you know, maybe 30 hours, 60 hours, it varies, um, but the companies can post projects that they have that isn't worthy of hiring a three or four month intern, but they still need a bright college student to tackle this problem, to program something for them, whatever the case might be. So instead they post these micro internships and they will hire someone to do that work. So you're still working directly with a company, you're still working on a real project, it's just not as long-term as an internship. Um, so the site I have listed there, Parker Dewey, um, is really the best place to go looking for those. Um, and you can just type Parker Dewey into Google if you um, aren't familiar with the site. Um, but like I said, definitely some great things out there, particularly if you're computer science, but um, definitely more out there beyond just computer science as well. So I uh, highly encourage you to do that. Like I said, even if you pick up one 30 hour project um, sometime this summer, that's a real world project that you just worked on. So definitely encourage you to check out those micro internships. Um, the next thing is taking either some free or low cost courses or certifications. Um, you can see up there, I've got some different types that are out there. That's certainly not an exhaustive list. So, you know, if you want to learn some programming languages, if you want to learn design software like a CAD, um, project management software, data visualization like a Tableau, um, and then you can see that other bullet point I have there are just some of the areas that you can actually go looking for those courses. So um, Coursera, the um, OpenCourseWare, MOOC, Tableau, Google, Microsoft, again, the list goes on. This really exploded last year um, when COVID started, and we've seen it just continue. I can't promise that they're all still free, but there's plenty of free options out there, or at least extremely low cost. So definitely encourage you. I think Garth's dropping links in the chat. Um, I can see it blinking. <laughs> so um, definitely encourage you to check those out. And just think about an area that you want to build up. There's no right or wrong answer. If you're a civil engineer, it never hurts to have some programming, even though you might think that that's not worthwhile. Everyone needs programming in this day and age. Maybe you're a computer science student. And you say, okay, I can, I can do all the programming. I can, I've learned the design software. I'm good. Well, do you know how to do some of the data visualization like Tableau? Or, you know, maybe you've never delved into something like project management. So think about areas maybe that you're not going to get as much in class with your major and really expand your horizons with um, some classes in those areas. So again, huge opportunities uh, for that to go ahead and both build your skill set, um, as well as just to sh show employers that, you know, you're really willing to go above and beyond to branch out on your skill set. And it's not just the things that you're learning in class or on the job. Um, a couple more specific examples I have down there. You can absolutely create a website or even an app. Those are things that are very easy to do. There's tutorials all over the place. Um, and then also Arduino kits. So those are um, kind of circuitry kits um, is probably the best way I can describe them. I'm sure a true engineer can describe them better. Um, but you can buy those pretty low cost on Amazon and play with a bunch of things. Um, we had someone when we ran this workshop last week ask, well, where can I find Arduino projects? I didn't know the answer. I did a quick Google search and I found hundreds of Arduino projects that people were working uh, through. So lots of really great, easy resources out there for you to connect with um, to build your skill sets as an engineer. Garth, anything to add on these? No, other than if you can sense the theme here, the theme is to try to get outside of the normal classroom environment and build skills in practical application-based 
uh, assignments, projects, programs. And like Rachel said, there's there's literally dozens of different sources out there that have thousands of opportunities in them. Uh, I did some quick searching on Gocera and Google and Microsoft and some of the other things today. There are tons of free um, programs. The, the pay is for the certificate. You don't need the certificate. You can complete the entire program. If you want to pay the $99 to get the piece of paper, knock yourself out, but most employers don't need it. Um, it's the skills that they're looking for. So again, the idea is to not just sit on your, your family couch or down your basement or whatever, but to get out, explore, uh, and do things this summer. If you can't find that formalized internship co-op summer job, make one. And Let's not forget volunteerism as well. I think Rachel's got a slide later on that talks about that. But the idea of volunteering is also important. Your church needs an upgrade in their website. Uh, the local student group or boys and girls club needs mentors. Anything and everything that gets you out there, gets you, again, uh, sharing some of your skills, building on new skills is important and what employers are going to look for down the road. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, it's so important that we saw this so much with COVID last year. Um, you know, students were losing their internships left and right. And, you know, they would ask us questions like, should I put this on my resume? And we would say, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day if you put, you know, I lost this internship on my resume because every single employer is going to say, okay, you had something lined up. What did you go do instead? Um, so yeah, it says something about you that you were able to interview and get something, but instead, what did you make the most of during that time that you suddenly had free? Um, and that's the same thing in this situation. Maybe you didn't get something pulled away, but how are you going to make the most of your summer to make sure that you stand out to employers in the fall? So some other resume building activities, Garth just alluded to this first one, um, volunteer, it always looks great to volunteer. It's wonderful to give back to your community, whether it's in the East Lansing area or back home or somewhere else. Um, that helpfulengineering.org is another one that we heard about last summer at the height of COVID. And those were actually um, kind of crowdsourcing problems that engineers were tackling within COVID. Um, so that website is still definitely going strong. I encourage you to check that out. Um, MSU Center for Community Engaged Learning. That, those are the volunteer projects that Michigan State identifies for their students to get involved in. Last I checked, almost all of them were virtual. They might be starting to add some in person. Uh, I admit it's been a minute since I've been on their website, but definitely some great resources there for students. Um, and then lastly, just because this one's top of mind for me, is um, volunteer at some COVID vaccine clinics. Those are all over the place. Um, you know, here in Lansing, we've probably got at least 10 different locations that I could name off the top of my head. I personally worked some of these vaccine clinics over the last month. Um, it feels great to be doing something to fight this virus. Um, so that's a really easy way that you can volunteer and give back. But Garth mentioned, you know, boys and girls club, local community centers and churches and things, um, you know, go back to your high school. You guys wrap up your finals a good month before high school does. You know, are they doing some robotics or things that maybe you were involved in in high school that they need some help with? So definitely look for different ways you can volunteer. That's a great way to build your resume and your skill set. Um, the next are some company or industry based activities. So lots and lots of companies beyond what I have on the screen, but a lot of them have created programs, not only for their own interns, but also for people to get glimpses into their company. Um, so a couple that I have on there, IBM and Google continuously have coding competitions about once a month that students can go ahead and jump into at any time. Um, so if you are someone that's into coding or want to get better at coding, definitely suggest looking either at those two companies or finding other companies out there that are doing it. Um, I'm pretty sure Microsoft might do them as well. Um, Imaginary in a box, Garth can chime in more on this, but this was a popular one for students last summer. Um, this is a partnership between Disney and Khan Academy. And if you're familiar with Disney, you know that their engineers are referred to as Imagineers. And so this program actually takes you through a bunch of tutorials and you actually end up building, I forget if it's a um, ride of your own or building like a mini theme park. Garth, can you clarify um, for me what it is? Yeah, it's actually, 
Yeah, it's actually a mini theme park um, that you can build. And uh, if you're a builder, that's great. But but if you're not a builder and you just want to take the course again, it's free of charge. Take you right up to and not actually do the build. That's cool too. You'll learn a lot. You'll have fun. I did put the link in the chat earlier, so you have that one as well. And it was very popular for the students that participated in the virtual experience last summer. Awesome. Thank you. A um, couple other websites. Um, NASA Solve. That's another one. They just have a bunch of different problems that you can, you know, work yourself through and try out on their website. GE Explorer series, similar thing, a uh, series of seminars that they've posted from um, GE on their website. So again, this is a short list. There's lots more out there. So lots of company or even industry-based type activities that you can go ahead and get involved with. Um, entrepreneurship. If you have thought about starting your own business or just want to lend your skills to a, um, a startup that's um, you know just getting underground. Um, the Burgess Institute is actually the Michigan State Entrepreneurship Hub. Um, so you can um, Google Burgess Institute MSU and you'll find your way to their, to their uh, office. And they'll uh, connect you with other students who are interested in startups, or you know, maybe you don't have an idea for a startup, but you have the skill set to help someone who does. So maybe there's a student over in business who says, I really need an engineer to build this, or I really need a computer scientist to program this. They will help match you up so that you can utilize your skill set to help get their startup going. Or on the flip side, if you do have an idea for a startup, they can help you figure out how to make some movement with that and get things moving. Um, how to start a startup um, is a great uh, resource if that is something you're looking for. Um, and then also I listed the startup job board right there in parentheses. Again, that's a um, Detroit-based uh, website that links you with startups that are looking for interns to assist them. So some great uh, things there. And then the MI STEM Forward is a very, very recent venture. Um, I don't know if Garth sat in the meeting last week, but um, they are just getting underfoot. It is some um, new funding that has come through from the um, state government to help uh, keep young talent in the state and connect um, engineers and STEM talent um, with uh, local startups. So definitely some opportunities there. If that's something of interest to you, we do have the link to that Google Doc um, that you can go ahead and submit a, um, a form of interest to that, to that organization. Um, the next thing I'll say is part-time jobs. Don't discount working retail, working at your local food establishment, whatever it might be for the summer. Um, if any of you have ever had a resume critiqued by our office or worked on with our office, we talk about the WHO method. And the WHO method talks about what you did, how you did it, and your outcome. And that how is your skills that you gained. I guarantee any of you who have ever worked food service retail, you have dealt with problem solving. You have utilized communication skills. You've utilized teamwork and leadership. All of those things translate to an engineering internship and you are building all of those skills through a part-time job. So don't discount finding a part-time job in your hometown just to continue to develop those skills because we can definitely help you put them on your resume um, to help build, um, build yourself towards the next engineering experience that you might want. Um, and then lastly, we're gonna go into this a lot more in depth, but um, After Five Detroit is a, local organization. They always do programs every summer for interns that are in the Detroit area. Last year, they had to pivot to virtual, and they created a whole series and seminars of professionals in the greater Detroit and Michigan area that were sharing advice with students, giving workshops. There were also some fun things like yoga and brewery tours and things like that, but a whole host of professional development seminars and workshops and things like that. So that is the After Five Detroit virtual intern experience. Um, and they have another great lineup going this summer that you can definitely plug into as many or as little as you want. MSU partners with them so that all of those um, workshops and seminars that they put on are free of cost to our students. Garth, anything on any of those that I missed? It is doubling back uh, in reverse chronological order. I put in the link for the After Five virtual intern experience. 
uh, the Detroit, they've got about a third of their speakers up. This is something that starts on June 14th, goes every day, Monday through Thursday, every day at 11 a.m. It's a new speaker. It's a new workshop. It's a new experience. Now you can plug and play as you go. Like Rachel said, we're members of the group. We're sponsors, so all is free. Um, and there's a great quote from one of our own uh, last summer. As Rachel said, a lot of students participated in this. And the quote is, the virtual intern experience gave me the chance to connect with amazing speakers, which opened up a world of opportunities for me. That's from one of our own, Aditya Ashok, who is a student. And he, um, he worked that into an internship uh, for this summer. So um, there's a lot of good takeaways that you can go from that. Um, and uh, I see Aditya is on the, uh, the, on the uh, group. And so uh, Aditya, anything you want to add about, uh, about that experience? Uh, I'm, I'm reading your quote, but, but you're live with us. Anything that uh, you can share uh, with us? Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Um, my summer last year was turned upside down uh, because of the pandemic. I had something lined up, came uh, obviously because of the pandemic, couldn't go through with it. So instead of sitting in my room back home in Bangalore, India, twiddling my thumbs, I decided to sign up for this experience. And it has been one of the most fruitful experiences of my life thus far. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you to come in contact firsthand and network with some of some of the top industry leaders right now and get your chance to you know get personalized advice, your questions answered and even mentorship from them and you know even the possibility to reach out to them after the session and connect with them one on one. So I suggest, you make the most of this experience. Mentorship goes a long way. Networking goes a long way. Building connections is one of the most important things you can do as students and as professionals. So make make the most of this experience is all I'm going to say. Thanks, Eddie. Um, the, other, the other thing I put in the chat to share with you that uh, Rachel had mentioned was the Michigan STEM Forward program. Um, this is something that um, has been used on and off of the state to, to get especially small and startup employers engaged in internships and co-ops. And so it's totally legit. Um, you go in there, it's a pretty easy application process. I put the link in the chat for you um, and you just fill it out, upload your resume. And what they do is a matching process. So based on the information you fill in the application, the people at Ann Arbor Spark and um, the government group behind this actually does matching, put your resumes in the right hands with the right employers. And then um, those employers select you for hire. It, it can be anywhere from 25 to 40 hours a week. Um, and what the government does is they pay you to work at these small and medium sized employers and then they bill the employers for your work and they only bill them at half the rate that you're getting paid. I think the um, the standard amount is $15 an hour if I read and listened to everything correctly in the seminar. About 425 to 450 um, positions will be filled through this. Uh, it's kind of a weird thing and the link is annarborusa.org forward slash stem forward but it again is totally legit and uh and it's a really good way especially those of you who are younger in the crowd never have done an internship co-op summer thing before or looking for a small or a startup employer this might be exactly what you're looking for so that michigan stem forward in the chat might be something i would uh, connect up with and they've just started collecting resumes so you're not behind the eight ball on this one you're right in the groove if you're here tonight and fill that out this evening or tomorrow get to our next slide there we go so um beyond the resume building and the skill building you can absolutely utilize your summer to do some networking and career related activities so we already mentioned after five detroit addy spoke for a few minutes he really undersells what he utilized um, after five detroit to do he connected with every single one of those executives on LinkedIn and had individual conversations with them and has continued to stay in touch with many of them. Um, he really took advantage of those seminars to build his network. Um, and you can absolutely do that. They are, the reason they're volunteering for these After Five Detroits, they are anxious to give their advice and their wisdom to students. 
So don't feel like you can't reach out to them. That's one of the reasons that they're doing it is to make these connections with students and help help that next generation. So um, strongly encourage you to do some networking um, as a result of the after five seminars. Um, the next thing is LinkedIn. Garth and I talked a little bit about it towards the beginning, but utilizing LinkedIn to make connections with people. Um, again, I won't go into it too in depth here, make an appointment with us if you need some assistance on it, but on LinkedIn, you can utilize um, the Michigan State alumni search to help you find alumni who graduated with the same major that you're in or are living in the same city as you hope to relocate to one day or are just working for your dream company. Um, and you can connect with those alumni and similar to the after five um, executives, these people are very willing to help their fellow Spartans to give some advice, um, to just help you um, with whatever you're looking for. Um, I tell students for this all the time, if they're doing a little bit of major exploration, talk to people that are actually out there doing the job. Um, so whatever you might wanna use LinkedIn for, um, you can spend your summer building those connections and really making the most of those networking opportunities so that when you go to job search, internship search in the future, you've already got a really great network built up. Um, the next similar along the same lines with networking is local Spartan alumni groups. There are cities all over the world that have clusters of Spartans that have formed these Spartan alumni groups. So there's a Los Angeles Spartans group. Actually, there might even be a couple in LA. There's a West Michigan Spartans group. There's a Fort Myers Spartans group down in Florida. They are all over the place. So whether it's a city that you're from or a city that you hope to end up in post-graduation or for an internship, um, you can find, I don't know if Garth's dropping the link, but Googling again can be your friend, um, just MSU alumni chapters and you will find it. Um, but and, and yes, Kyle Lichty has joined us and there is a Jackson Spartan group oh, as well. Of course, I was wondering what had Garth <laughs> laughing, so that explains it. Um, so yeah, I, on that website, every single one of those Spartan alumni groups has their contact information. They tend to have Facebook pages. They might be doing gatherings, whether virtual or in person. I know West Michigan Spartans does a golf outing. I would assume since golf's a pretty safe COVID activity, they're probably still doing that. So look at those local alumni chapters and find ways that um, you can connect with them and uh, make those connections. Uh, the next thing you can spend your summer on uh, some time on the summer is just cleaning up your social media accounts. You wouldn't want anything that's out there on your social media um, to hurt you when you go to get a job. Um, you don't want when they Google you um, for those wild party shots or whatever else that you might have on your Facebook to come up. So spend some time cleaning up those social media accounts. Um, next, you can just spend some time updating your resume if that's something you haven't really spent much time on this summer, maybe a first year student, you just didn't get around to it this year. Um, definitely connect with our office and we will, we have great resume resources on our website. Um, and then beyond your draft, we will help you make sure you're using that who method correctly, make sure the formatting looks good and clean and that you're selling your skills appropriately. So definitely you can spend some time this summer on the resume. And then also practicing the interview skills. Maybe you got interviews this summer, so you know the resume is good, but maybe the interviews didn't gain much traction. So interview stream is a great resource that MSU has for free. You can practice um, canned sets of interview questions that we have. You video yourself and then you can watch it back, critique yourself, see how you're answering things, how you come across. Maybe you're talking really fast, really slow, not answering questions completely, whatever the case might be. You can also forward it to our office. You can forward it to friends and family um, and they can review it and give you some feedback. So great um, resource there. Um, and then we also have just some written resources for interview skills on our website. So those are some networking career related things you can do this summer. Uh, Garth, anything to add on those? No, I just uh, trying to keep up with your rage. I've put uh, every link I could think of in the chat. So the GE Explorer series that Rachel mentioned a couple slides ago. Um, don't schedule an appointment with one of us. Go to the LinkedIn webinar on our website. In 10 minutes, you can know everything on LinkedIn from the master himself, Kyle Lichty. 
And so it's right there on our website. And as, as uh, Rachel commented about the MSU alumni clubs, I put the link in for that. You just go to the alumni.msu.edu, you click on get together and then click on clubs and you can pick it by region and find the Jackson club and the Twin Cities club and the Fort Myers club and all that kind of stuff. And, and Spartans wanna help Spartans. Uh, so that's a really good one. Rachel also uh, noted resumes. I put resumes plus resumes. Resumes plus interviews is what I meant to put. Um, that's also on our website. Put the website link there. And then the final one I'm part of, the Engineering Society of Detroit has a student chapter. Those of you who are in, in and around Detroit want to get engaged in Detroit. Um, all the things that we're talking about, from volunteerism to networking events to a, a job portal to information on internships and co-ops are all on the Engineering Society of Detroit's website. So I put that on there and by the way our student chapter of the engineering society of detroit is holding their last event um wednesday it's on handshake i'll get you the link in a second uh where it talks about they're going to talk about preparing yourself for internships co-op summer jobs last chance for them to help you a couple of uh their recent alums shadman Rahman and um sydney hickmott will be there to um share some of their inf insights answer questions that kind of stuff that's um wednesday night it's at 7 30 it's on linkedin and i'll put the linkedin I'll, I'll put the um link in for you in the chat so you can register for that if you'd like a uh, great resource in the greater detroit area all right, so we've teased a little bit, um, both in the description for the workshop and at the start of it, about something that you can do through the College of Engineering that Garth and I are gonna be involved with this summer. So to take everyone back to last summer, we mentioned, as I'm sure everyone can guess, that COVID ruined a lot of students' uh, internship plans for the summer. Some companies pivoted to virtual, but a lot of them were scrambling too. So we came alongside our students and Garth and our fourth colleague, Bernadette, um, created what we called the engineering virtual internship course. And they created, it was about an eight week course um, with experiences for students to still gain a lot of those skills that they would have hopefully gained in their internship. Not everything, hard to replace all of it with a virtual experience, not through a company, um, but they were able to do a lot. And that consisted of professional development workshops and seminars, both through After Five Detroit and through our office. Um, there's some book work um, that's very typical of the EGRX course um, that all internships and co-ops take. Um, and then students had to take on some additional skill building things like the Disney and Khan Academy that we mentioned or the GE Explorer series, some of those other things to build their skill sets beyond um, just the professional development workshops and book, book work. Um, so this summer, as we started looking towards things, we decided, you know, there's definitely more internship opportunities out there this summer, but there's still limited things. And then especially myself working with first year students, I said, you know, even in the best of times, first year students don't have the same number of opportunities as, um, you know, our junior students, just the way it is with uh, skills and classes taken and things like that. So this year we decided to create a two course option for the virtual internship. There will be one class for, um, it says freshman, sophomore. I'm gonna tell you it's first and second year students. It does not go by credit. So first and second year students, and then a second course for anyone who's basically third year and up. And we will again put on this virtual internship experience. This will be a free one credit course through our EGRX class. Uh, if you have ever had an internship or co-op or heard our office talk about it, we have a course that you can enroll in called EGRX because the number changes every time. Um, and so we will offer that with this course as well. So you will earn a credit towards your Michigan State degree. If you're familiar with EGRX waiver, this will not count towards the waiver, but you will still get the um, free tuition for this particular class. Um, it will consist of the same things I mentioned for last summer. There's gonna be the book component um, that you walk through as well as professional development workshops and seminars, things like After Five Detroit, but then also some career-based seminars. You know, we'll do some things on LinkedIn and resume building and interviews, as well as some skill-based seminars. And for those, we're gonna partner with um, some of our partner engineering companies um, where they might come in and, you know, give a talk on uh, project management or on CAD or on Tableau, list keeps going. 
So we'll have some people coming in to do skill-based seminars as well as workplace-based seminars. So things like communication in the workplace, how do you professionally communicate? Um, we know and employers know that sometimes that stuff isn't as intuitive as we all think it is. Um, and then lastly, particularly for the first and second year course, we're gonna have some workshops and seminars that are more exploratory in nature. Um, and again, we'll be partnering with uh, companies to deliver those. And those will either be based on job function or based on industry. Um, if you're still kind of in that more um, exploratory stage where maybe you're sure you wanna be a chemical engineer, but you're not sure what kind of role you want. Do you want a manufacturing role? Do you want R&D? Do you want something else? Um, so hopefully some of those seminars will help you zero in on that by hearing from people that are doing those jobs. Um, and then the first and second year course will um, consist of the employer-led mini projects. Again, we're gonna be partnering with some of our uh, partner employers to create uh, seminars followed by hands-on projects for all of you. Um, so we don't have those topics yet because we are still um, solidifying those companies behind the scenes. But again, we mentioned Tableau, for example. So a company might come in and do a one to two hour seminar on how to use Tableau. And as part of that, they would assign the participants a project that they can go do Tableau. They'll give you a data set, and then they'll ask you to create some visualizations using that data set. We would then gather the following week with that employer again, and you would share out what you were able to do. The employer can give some feedback, and then it also gives you a chance to ask some questions. You might say, hey, I ran into this problem while I did that. In your real life experience um, with XYZ company, how do you tackle um, a problem like that in the course of this sort of project? Um, so that'll be a chance for you to have some more hands-on learning, to gain some of those skills that we talked about earlier through, you know, maybe that you did in a course or something like that, um, but allow you to actually apply it to a project. And then I'll let Garth talk a little bit more about what that component will look like at the third year plus uh, level. Sure, so it's it's a lot of the, the things that will cross over with what Rachel just explained. Uh, again, from a junior senior perspective, um, we'll have some of the traditional book book work that's involved in EGRX. It'll be some of some different chapters, a little bit more of our uh, uh, value proposition and, and some things as a junior and senior um, that you really need to be aware of and starting to prepare for that full time job search. So we'll do a little bit um, different in in the in the um, in the textbook work in terms of the professional development workshops and seminars we will again use after five um, so that'll be consistent across either either course option um, there will be a number of career based and skill based exercises and programs to be a part of as well i think um, probably the best word that i can use for the junior senior is a, it will be a little bit more curated a little bit more specific um, to you as as the um, as the customer as the student as a pairs to, uh, as a opposed to the freshman sophomore, which will be a little bit more, as, as Rachel put, exploratory in nature. Um, this will be a little bit more specific in what your needs are, what your goals are, what your skill sets are, and what you're still looking to accomplish. And there will be some specific assignments based on where you're at in the process and what you want to do going forward. We're also talking to employers, um, not so much on many projects, but on leadership symposiums and things like that that could cross over to first and second year as well, um, but will be um, a high priority for those of you that are in the junior senior section and then uh, and then finally throughout um, we didn't mention it but if you've been a part of anything with the center over the past year you probably heard from our career peers or a staff member uh, in fact I think Rachel mentioned it a couple times tonight about who logic that we utilize in terms of our resume and interviewing prep and uh, who logic author Jane Avarian will be joining our staff as a consultant this summer and we'll be preparing a series of workshops and seminars um, not only for this class but some other things as well that will be a part of your class construction so you'll not be hearing from rachel or garth or kyle or, or bernadette but actually from the author herself will be will be uh, presenting to all of you and working with some of you uh, on who logic so that'll be an exciting portion of the class as well all right so if this sounds interesting to you um, we've got our uh, email address right there on the screen careers at egr.msu.edu just go ahead and drop us a note, say um, which cohort you're interested in, whether it's the first and second year or the third plus. So say, hey, I went to the workshop tonight. Um, I'm a mechanical engineering first year student, 
and I would, I'm interested in the virtual internship course this summer. Um, we are still finalizing with the registrar which course number um, and section that you will need to enroll in. So we are gathering a list behind the scenes. And then as soon as we have that enrollment information, we'll email everyone on our list and say, all right, here's the, here's the course number. You can go ahead and enroll on schedule of courses. Um, or I guess it's uh, Campus Solutions now, forgive me. I know you guys have uh, been dealing with your new system in the last couple of weeks here, but um, you go ahead and um, get yourself enrolled in the course. So go ahead and email us there. Um, also, if you have any questions, you can feel free to drop us a line there as well. Um, right now we are saying the deadline for inclusion in the course is gonna be June 1st. No harm, no foul if you tell us right now that you wanna be involved with it and maybe an internship um, comes through for you in the next couple of weeks. We can always go ahead and take you off the list. So um, certainly not a problem there. Um, but uh, just know that it's harder for us to enroll you after that. We start dealing with um, extra overrides and things like that. Um, so just a lot more work behind the scenes. So we won't say that we absolutely can't, but um, we're, our goal is to get everyone in there by June 1st. A couple of thoughts on that too. Um, as you think about that and, and you either email us for interest or you wanna talk more, we're always happy to do that. Um, and then should you get a formalized um, internship co-op, there's no reason why you can't enroll in a regular course section of EGRX as well uh, and earn credit towards uh, both your graduation requirement and in some of your majors use that credit uh, to waive out a major elective. So that's always a benefit of being part of the traditional EGRX uh, course series. And so that's, that's always an option. The other thing I do want to point out to you as well, um, as Rachel said, this is a free course. Uh, we cover the course, the cost of the credit, other than a, a minimal administrative fee that the university uh, charges you that with an easy email, you can probably get out of it. Uh, it's about $24, I think it was last year. Anybody who was in the course can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's right. Um, we waive out everything else uh, as long as you know you're um, you're not on class, you're not on campus taking other coursework. Um, you know that that's in, uh, being involved. And the other thing I want to share with you is, you know, Rachel's already ramped this up for you. If you want to participate in everything that we just talked about. Uh, from after five to the Coursera classes to, you know, volunteerism and all the things that we covered in the first three slides before we got to the course. You can always do that. You can always do that for free. You can always do that in your own time. You can always do that. If you want to get credit for it, if you want to actually earn a credit towards your graduation, if you want to get it on your transcript, if you want to you know, do the extras to get kind of formally guided in the program and have it set up for you, then, then this might be for you. One of the questions that we were asking the first night we did this is how much time is this and how rigid is this? Um, it, it, it's, it, it's a course and we're trying to make up in terms of not having a, uh, a valid uh, internship or co-op with a company. So we're, there, there's some work involved to it. Um, the Khan Academy um, assignment took anywhere from 10 to 15 hours for most people. Um, Rachel pointed out that some of the Coursera courses and things take 15, 20. I saw one that took 30 hours. Um, so there's going to be some time there. Those seminars and workshops, um, they start on June 14th. They go for seven weeks every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 11 a.m. There is a half an hour to an hour long seminar. Now, you don't have to be at every one. Uh, but you're going to be at a lot of them. And so, and when we, and we can be um, flexible with some of the things that we're doing, but at the end of the day, you need to be able to attend some of those seminars and workshops. You need to be able to, to complete the Coursera course or whatever is assigned to you. You need to be a part of, of some of that um, many projects that the employer is going to be putting forward. So, so there is some work involved in this. There is some time commitment involved in this. And, um, and if you're, you're not going to have access to the internet, I had a, a student last summer that was going in the, in the remote UP and he told me he was not going to have access to the internet for two weeks. Um, that might be a problem. Um, so so we can get around problems if we know about them ahead of time. Uh, but it, it's something that I want you to make yourself aware of because once we also get into the class, like Rachel said, uh, no harm, no foul. 
uh, you want to drop a class, that's cool. But once we get to a certain date, not only in, in the course uh, do, you, do you need to be enrolled in order to get by the overrides, but in a certain date, it's, it's a real course at Michigan State. And if you try to drop it, you're not going to get uh, your money back. Now, there was no money. Okay, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to show as a, a no pass. And you're going to have to explain that along the way. So there, there's some some downsides if, if this is not what you want to do as well. And again, no harm, no foul. You don't have to commit to it tonight. Think about it. If you want to set up a, an appointment with one of us to talk about it again, there is some flexibility involved. But I want to make sure that you understand this is a real course with real work as well, because um, I think that's only fair. Um, I, I'm going to ask Addy to unmic one more time because not only was he part of the After Five program, but he was part of the class as well. He just put it's totally worth it. Take the opportunity. But I, I wanted to give him one shot to talk about why it was worth it and the opportunity um, be, in, in terms of the course. So Addy, you want to unmic and just share a little bit again of your uh, your experience from a course perspective. The course is really simple, guys. Um, it has a couple of reading assignments, which take very little time. Um, but more important, and those reading assignments do like, uh, you know, share a lot of relevant information, a lot of, a lot of relevant advice for each of us. I think it's really cool. Um, but beyond that, what this course essentially does is it opens up, it creates a platform for you to explore what can be really beneficial for you. Um, it gives you the opportunity to network with people. It gives you a glimpse of what a professional world would look like. It, you know, it, it sets you up for you to figure out your potential and what where you're headed. Uh, this is a good place to start off. This, a, a summer is the right time to do it. Um, the course is really simple. If you're taking additional credits, I did 20 credits last semester with, and this was one of the credits. Um, it's really not that hard to maintain or balance this class uh, with any anything else you have. It, it, it should take less than about an hour every week. And I might be highballing it. But yeah, like I said, this entire summer experience that the center is laying out for you is about you trying to figure out what is best for you and setting you up for success. So it's up, it, it's all up to you to make the most of this opportunity. All right, well, with that, um, that is it for our formal presentation. We're happy.